Hello everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for December 13th, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, consider pur purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. If the meeting time has changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the CircuitPython Nisa's Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. Uh, there is a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week, uh, usually about a week beforehand. Uh, so check the pinned messages to find the latest notes document. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project, and it's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. Uh, in the weeds is an opportunity, to, opportunity for more long-term discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, I'll get started on community news right after I take a time code. So community news is a preview of the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter uh, that is put out every week, uh, primarily thanks to Anne. Um, and this is a, it, it, the newsletter is a glimpse at what's going on in CircuitPython, MicroPython, and Python uh, in the given week. So first up, uh, we have uh, PyLeap goes into official beta test. PyLeap is an app for iOS and iPad OS. It allows you to collect complete projects from the Adafruit Learn system and transfer them directly to your Circuit Playground Bluefruit without opening a code editor or connecting to a computer. Send files and libraries directly to your Bluefruit device without a desktop computer. And Foamy Guy, thank you for posting the link. Uh, you can also read more in the official guide on the Adafruit Learning System for the PyLeap app. Um, and the short link is actually adafru.it slash PyLeap if anybody wants to install it for their iOS device as well. Next up, uh, in the process, <laughs> this is a bit of a preview. Uh, CircuitPython 7.1.0 Beta 3 is nearly available. Um, it's the fourth beta release of 7.1. It is relatively stable, but contains issues, uh, fixes to address issues to address for 7.1. The main addition to this beta over the last is the addition of a non-OS bare metal version of CircuitPython for some Broadcom-based Raspberry Pi single board computers. Uh, Further additions uh, are the keypad.events now includes timestamps. The Espresso port now includes I2C peripheral, Wi-Fi monitor mode, ESP32 C3 support, and parallel image cap capture. Bitmap tools uh, has added dithering and alpha blend. 
preliminary support for async IO is included. Uh, just use the CircuitPython async IO library to take full advantage of it. There is now a gif IO dot gif writer. HID now provides boot device and feature report support. Rotary IO now allows setting the divisor of counts per transition. The SAMD port now provides watchdog and alarm with sleep. The STM port now provides support for the STM32L4R5. And MicroPython 117 has been merged in. Uh, we have a new translation for Russian as well. Um, so that's that. Next up in the news category, we have Boston College students demonstrate their final projects using CircuitPython. Professor John Gallagher teaches an excellent class on using microcontrollers to non-engineering students. For the students' final projects, they built a number of devices using CircuitPython in, in innovative ways. Here are some of the projects as posted on Professor Gallagher's Twitter. One is a personal assistant robot named Popcorn. Another is a 3D printed motorized Iron Man helmet with a heads up display on a Raspberry Pi 4, plus the Adafruit Cricket hat running CircuitPython. And lastly, an electronic fish feeder with CircuitPython. Next, and not quite Python news, but related to Raspberry Pis, we, uh, there's a deep dive into Raspberry Pi Zero 2W power consumption. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2W power consumption uh, is measured with various peripherals on and being used and some of those turned off. This is a great baseline for comparing with the bare metal no OS circuit Python version on the board and it's available from CNX software. Last up in news, of course this is just a preview, there's a lot more in the newsletter. Um, GitHub code search technology preview. GitHub is rolling out a technology preview for substantial improvements to searching code on the platform. A survey must be must be filled out for access. If granted, it'll be located at cs.github.com. The search index covers more than 5 million of the most popular public repositories. In addition, you can search private repositories you have access to. All right. And I, I guess I should sign up for that too. I'd love to have that work. All right. That is it for news. Uh, the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your, contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub by going to github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter, check the drafts folder, or and spit, submit a pull request with the changes. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com and then we'll add it ourselves. All right, that's it for the first section. Uh, next up, uh, we have State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the health of the project and its subprojects, uh, really meant to ground us in the numbers that we find valuable. If you have other numbers you'd like here, we, we're totally open to adding some things here. So let me do overall first. So overall, we have 55 pull requests merged, which is very impressive. Um, <laughs> there are 26 authors uh, of those 55 pull requests. Some new names in this list that I don't recognize. Uh, Garrett Heath 4, Mr. Dalgard, Romilly, uh, Purples, uh, Rufus, Rufus VS, Guy Focus, uh, Keenan Johnson, I think. Colorado Carlos are all new names there. So thank you to all those new authors of pull requests. We really appreciate you. Uh, we also appreciate the 13 reviewers that uh, helped make those authors possible. Um, so that's even a higher number there too. So thank you to our reviewers um, for doing all that work and supporting those authors. Uh, so that's for pull requests. Uh, issues wise, we had 22 closed issues by nine people and 20 opened by 17 people. So we're doing a good job at keeping up with uh, our issue rate. So thank you everybody for doing that.
Next up for the core, this is the uh, C core of CircuitPython. Uh, that is what you would load via a UF2 file typically and runs on a microcontroller. Uh, for the core, we had 27 pull requests merged from nine different authors. So thank you to all of our authors there. Uh, 27 is a pretty good number for us as well. Uh, we had six reviewers. Uh, so thank you to all of our reviewers. And we have 11 open pull requests where the oldest is 100 days old. So. Uh, if you are, are uh, involved in any of those pull requests that are uh, getting kind of old, please make sure that the uh, something is happening with them. And if not, uh, go ahead and close the pull request. Uh, if there's some work that we still need to do, what you can do is you can open an issue and then link to the branch instead uh, for a longer term. Like we need to pick this up at some point and stuff. Uh, so check that out. Uh, if you're involved in some pull requests, issues wise for the core, we had eight closed issues by three people and 11 opened by 10 people uh, for a total of 463 open issues. Uh, we have six active milestones. Milestones are the way that we kind of prioritize and triage the uh, issues as they come in. Um, so we have five issues not assigned to milestones. So those are the ones that we need to triage. Uh, we have zero open issues for 710, which is uh, any issue that we think should block a stable release for 7.1. So that's been doing pretty good. We have a 7XX, which are minor issues that wouldn't blo block a stable release. We have 20 of those, and we have uh, 10 open issues under the 80 milestone, which are the things that uh, we want to do with uh, when we switch to 8.0. So that's the uh, that's the core. Uh, thanks to Dan, uh, just for an overview. Thanks to Dan for facilitating uh, the beta releases of 7.1 and fixing a bunch of bugs along with it. So. Uh, expect to see 7.1 out here shortly, I think, um, in the next few weeks. So thank you, Dan. All right, uh, next up we have a status update or a update about the libraries from Catney. Yeah, and my uh, browser decided to stop trying to crash just at the right time, so oh, we're good. good to go. Fingers crossed. Yes. So... Um, this is uh, this section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore and a couple of extras. So across all of those repos, we had 25 pull requests merged from 17 authors and 10 reviewers. Uh, I do want to point out that about half of the PRs that were merged were between 22 and 280 days old. I'm really excited about this. Um, these things will be covered in status updates and hug reports, but early hug report to Foamy Guy for that. Um, I will let him uh, talk about it, and then I will talk about it afterwards. Um, and then that leaves us with 56 open pull requests. We have 13 issues closed by six people and eight open by seven people, leaving us with 644 open issues. 258 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs, take a look at them. Uh, if you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, let us know what you think of the code, leave a comment. And once you're more comfortable with that, we can look at upgrading you to the review team. If you're interested in writing some code, uh, check out the issues list. If you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. If you're looking for something more complicated, bug or enhancement would be more up your alley. Um, leave a comment on the issue to let us know you're working on it. And if you need help getting started, we are available. There's also a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Uh, in terms of new libraries this week, we didn't have any, but we had a number of updated libraries. The list is pretty long, so I won't read it off, but it is in the notes. So take a look at that if you're interested. Um, overall, we're seeing activity on the older PRs now. Um, so if you are an author of an older PR, please expect to see an update there. Um, either we will work through getting the PR up to date with all of the changes that have happened since the PR was submitted, and then um, get it merged, or depending on the situation, we may close it. Um, remember that we can always reopen PRs or you can submit a new one if you are still interested in contributing the um, change that you made at a later date. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Next up, let's get an update on Blinka from Maker Melissa. 
Hello. Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, uh, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had three pull requests merged by three authors and one rev one reviewer. Um, we have five open pull requests left, and there was one closed issue by one person and one open by one person, leaving a net of 65 open issues. There were 15,000... 630 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are now up to 85 boards. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, that's it for State of Circuit Python libraries in Blinka. Next up, uh, the next section we have is Hug Reports. This is done as a round robin, so I will start and then uh, start from the top of the list in the circuit or in the Circuit Python voice channel uh, and those who are listed in the doc, doc only. Uh, if you're not in the doc, I will skip over you. Um, so let me start, and I think I'm, I might be scooping some information just a little bit, but uh, first a hug report to Foamy, Foamy Guy for being an awesome participant in our community, and uh, very excited to hear that Foamy Guy is going to start working full Mondays for us at Adafruit, so that's going to be awesome. And then also a hug report to Foamy Guy for... Uh, Taking my place and keeping the torch going when I when I choose not to stream on Fridays, Foamy Guy usually will jump in and stream at the same time. So providing a home for those folks that like to sit and uh, hang out with uh, some deep divers. So thank you, Foamy Guy, for that. And uh, excited to work more with you. Next up, a uh, hug report for Katni and Dan for switching days with me for running the meeting uh, since I'll be kind of off and on out uh, throughout the holidays. And a double hug to Katni for orchestrating it. Uh, Katni's a great person for uh, getting things done. So thank you, Katni. Uh, last up, I have a hug report for BR Hoff 720 from SparkFun for getting us a USB PID for the STM32 Thing Plus. And that's it for me. Next up, we have notes from C. Grover. So I'll read these off. Um, C. Grover says group hug and a uh, hug report to Foamy Guy as an official member of the Adafruit CircuitPython team. And next up we have Dan. I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear Dan? All right, we'll, we'll get back to you. Okay. Um, uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, this week hugs to, uh, Katni, Jeff, Scott, and Dan. Um, and as well, honestly, the whole community, uh, everybody has been super wel welcoming to me, uh, to join the CircuitPython team. And so it's been uh, a really great time and I really appreciate, uh, everybody being so nice, uh, for a bunch of different reasons. I've had a couple conversations. I've had plenty of folks, uh, telling me in the discord, congratulations and stuff like that. So I appreciate all of you. Um, to Dexter Starbird, who tested out an issue that came up on uh, SAMD51 devices to try to reproduce it and um, shared the findings that they came up with. And then uh, to Dan H., who um, figured out the root cause of that issue and implemented a solution uh, real quick. So thank you to all of those folks. Awesome. Thank you, Filmy Guy. Dan, did you want to try again? <laughs> no luck. All right. Uh, next up, I have. Okay, I'll read. I'll read off for Dan here. I just had a meeting with Dan, and I can hear him. So it's just Discord being unhappy. Dan says a hug report to Foamy Guy for finding the seven one zero beta two regression and providing good examples for reproducing the pro problem. And a hug report to Jeff uh, Jeff Epler <laughs> Jeffler, uh, for reviews and fixes while on vacation. All right. Uh, next up, I have notes from G3 Holiday, who says, uh, group hug and a hug to Tan Newt for CircuitPython on the Pi and NeoPixel support work. And a hug report to Foamy Guy. Glad to see you as an officially mem official member of the Adaf Adafruit family. Next up, I have notes from Jeff, who says, uh, hug report to Dan H for bug hunting assistance and testing. Next cool. up is Jerry. Hi. Uh, yeah, hug to you, Scott, for the uh, putting out the Pi Developer PCB on Oshpark. Thanks for that. Uh, and to Foamy Guy, glad to see you taking on an official role of that a few better fruit. 
and a, a group hug from me and my cat. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Thank you both for you and your cat always attending the meeting. Uh, next up, we have Katney. Mine was threatening to attend the meeting, but she seems to have stopped. <laughs> Um, so first up, hug report to Foamy Guy for joining the Adafruit team. I am super excited about this. Um, it uh, was uh, was a great thing. I, I checked into whether we were able to, um, you know, get get Foamy Guy some more uh, stuff to do, and um, everything kind of happened after that. Um, there were already plans in the works, and that was excellent to hear. So I'm I'm very excited about that and welcome. Um, hug report to Carter for helping out sorting, um, helping with sorting out a table of all available addresses on the various STEM seesaw breakouts, um, the Neo key breakout and the I just did it and I'm blind. The Neo slider breakout have four address pins on them, and so you can do 16 addresses. And we explained an example of five of them. And Carter pointed out that folks are struggling to do the math to figure out the others and how that works. And so instead, um, I put together a table that has exactly what, what pins when set in a certain way turn into what address. And so that should be super helpful. And um, I learned a bit making the table and Carter helped out with that. Um, <clears throat> another hug report to Foamy Guy for working through the library PRs. Um, uh, Jose David a while back went through quite a bit, um, but uh, Jose David does not have um, merging access, so it was uh, kind of stalled out um, at the point that I had or didn't have time um, to work on it, and Foamy Guys picked that up, and that's why there's so, so many older PRs uh, have been merged recently, uh, so that's great to see, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, hoping to get caught up um to scott for swapping running the meeting with me today to dan for being the third player in the game of meeting swapsies and to lamore and pt for being incredibly flexible and supportive um i will talk about this in my status updates but i'm currently in the middle of a international move and um they've just been amazing so i really appreciate it that's what i've got awesome thank you katney next up is maker melissa Uh, hello. Uh, let's see. I wanted to uh, give a hug report to Foamy Guy for joining the team. Uh, one to Carter for adding all the UTIF boards to Blinka, and a group pack to everyone else. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, last up, we have notes from Mark. Uh, Mark says a quick hug report or a hug report to Katni for a quick discussion on where to put some IS31 FL3741 changes. Awesome. Thank you, Mark, and thank you everybody for participating in hug reports. Next up we have an, another round robin. This time is status updates. So it will work just the same way. I will start and then we'll go alphabetically through the list. Um so for me. Uh, this Friday I'm out, so no stream, or also the two Fridays after that I'm out as well. Uh, long weekend this weekend, which I'm excited about. Hopefully some snowshoeing, or at least some hiking. Uh, next, uh, next on my list is I got spy support checked in for the Broadcom port. So check that out if you're trying uh, CircuitPython alone on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this week I've got two things to finish uh, in terms of Raspberry Pi land. Uh, one is NeoPixel support, which I was working on in my stream last week. So if you want to see the details of that, uh, check that out. Uh, I guess I should hug report ToddBot. I think uh, Todd also gave me a clue as to the next thing I can try to get the NeoPixel support working. Uh, and then I also was working on adding support for the old Raspberry Pi Zero because I think it's a great uh, a great board to run CircuitPython on. Um, and so I'm going to work on, on that as well. So both are started, but neither are finished. So that's primarily the, the coding work that I'm going to be doing on the four days this week that I'm working. Um, and of course, I'll be working some next week, so I can pick that up uh, if I need to next week. All right. Next up, I have notes from C. Grover, who I will take a time code and then read off. Um, Seagrover says, I had a significant breakthrough in understanding Python namespaces and class inheritance. 
started to see some significant performance, memory management, and class UI improvements as previous code was updated with the new knowledge. I released new versions of the Scale, Magic Eye, and Bubble Display Retro Display I.O. widgets. The newest Bubble Display is a multi-digit stackable bubble lens LED 7-segment display similar to those used on the HP 35 calculator. Each stackable 12-pin dip-sized unit can contain contain from one to five digits. And there's a picture in the doc as well. Um, plans are to wrap up four more retro widgets over the next week. Bar graph, NeoPixel strip, panel meters, and analog clock. Uh, going to resist the urge to refactor every previously coded circuit Python project to improve performance, given my newfound coding hammer. Back in the studio to track three new songs, I'm performing all the MIDI and acoustic instruments. Next up, let's check in with Dan and see if his audio is working. All right, I'm on my phone now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so um, there was this SD card problem that a bunch of people had and a bunch of people did not have. And I went through my stock of SD cards and I was able to reproduce it. So I reproduced it, did a git bisect, which is doing um, a binary search to find out where the offending code was, and I found that and told Jeff about it, and he fixed it immediately. So that worked out very well. Um, I've been doing various 7.1.x fixes, um, or 7.1.0 fixes, I should say. Uh, BLE IO HCI support, that's for like using an airlift. Uh, that wasn't working, and I fixed that. Um, I fixed uh, a confusing PWM app problem on RP2040. And uh, we had problems. I fixed another thing on RP2040, which was that um, we had problems getting it to work with the Neo slider, which uses a new implementation of Seesaw. Zero length I2C writes were not working right. And it turned out there was, it just was, there was this timeout. We use BitBang IO when we do zero length I2C writes on RP2040. So I fixed that. So I released 7.1.0 beta 2 with a bunch of these fixes and a bunch, those fixes and a bunch more, a huge number from other people, like dozens and dozens of fixes. That included enabling sleep on all SAM, SAM X5 boards. Um, and then immediately Foamy Guy was able to figure out that something was causing uh, display O not to work properly, which turned out to be because of sleep and so I'm today releasing 7.1.0 beta 3, which basically just fixes that regression so that we can have a, a beta that works better. So this is an example of like, we can be uh, quick with the betas if we need to. Okay, that's it. Thanks, Dan. We're, we're quick with the betas because you're quick with the betas. So thank you for that. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Um, so last week, um, as has been mentioned a few times, I uh, got finalized to join the Adafruit team. And to add a little more details, um, I also got it worked out with my current employer. So starting at the beginning of next year, I'll be dedicating uh, all Mondays to work on CircuitPython. So I'm super excited about that. Um, some of the more uh, nitty gritty stuff I did this week is inside of TileGrid in the core, I added height and width and tile height and tile width uh, properties so that you can access the size of the tile grid after you create it. Um, some of that actually ended up already existing, just not being exposed to the Python layer yet. So that was uh, interesting to kind of see it and make a guess that it was actually already there and figure out how to hook it up. Uh, I had fun working on that. Um, I will uh, probably PR that stuff this week. And then uh, a few other things I worked on were some fixes in the uh, PYOA library. I think it's like Python own adventure or something like that. You can um, basically make little cards that have like a logical tree that goes through it. You can press a certain button and it leads you to a different card and so on and so forth, um, which is actually, it's a pretty neat library that I haven't played uh, with too much, but we got some fixes in there, including a new feature to be able to change the background color behind the text. Uh, we have background images but the text was just put over the top of them. And so some of them were a little difficult to read and now we can use a uh, background color. Um, and then uh, I also created a demo this past week and showed it on show and tell, which was um, showing how to store 
configuration or like application state inside of NVM storage. Um, so it can remember like what it was configured to the last time you ran it and then start up next time and just pick up where it left off. Um, so I think that'll be a good example for folks that want to do similar stuff like that. Um, for this week, I am still working through uh, open PRs like Katni mentioned. I'm kind of aiming broadly for the older ones first, but I am uh, sometimes get, uh, you know, just have my interest peaked uh, by a newer one, or I happen to have the equipment already out or something like that. So uh, doing a little bit of a mix. Um, I'm working on um, adding alt click functionality to cursor control. Um, I have a, a specific use case in mind for that, um, that I'll talk about a little bit more once it's uh, actually in there, but there is an issue and there'll be a PR soon if folks are interested in more details. And then, um, uh, Scott mentioned uh, that he's not going to be streaming on Friday, and so I will stream for sure this Friday evening. I'll plan to the next uh, couple as well while Scott's away, but I'm not 100% uh, certain if I will make it on the others. But as long as nothing else comes up, then I'll plan on streaming those Friday nights. Uh, and that's what I got. Thank you. They are like Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, right? Yes, I think so. Although I'm not, uh, don't have a calendar. Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I would recommend not doing it, but that's your call. Okay. Um, take a break. Breaks are good. Um, okay, next up, uh, I have notes from G3 Holiday. Uh, G3 Holiday says, working on a NeoPixel spiral Christmas tree with a Feather RP2040. I'll change it to a Pi soon. I'm also taking a break for Christmas starting Wednesday all the way through my birthday on January 2nd. So, ooh, that's exciting. Uh, next up, we have notes from Jepler. <laughs> I always want to say it's like too close to his name. Uh, Jeff uh, dropped some notes in here, but is on vacation, so uh, is not in the meeting. Jeff says, with Dan's help, fixed an SD card problem that was vexing users. Uh, I can take the December 20th meeting if nobody else has volunteered to. Uh, hiking in the Sedona arrow area, it's beautiful and back at work on Thursday. There's a picture in the notes doc here uh, that looks really gorgeous. <laughs> so I'm glad Jess getting out and taking a break. Um, thank you, Foamy Guy, for posting that in there. So t that's a reminder, everybody. Uh, breaks are good. Take breaks. Don't overwork. Um, all right, next up we have Jerry. Only hit the button, button once. Um... Yeah, so uh, I don't know what I did this week. Just lots of stuff, and it was all fun. But <laughs> I can't, remember. can't keep track of what it was. Um, so looking forward to this week. I just got my the my new Pi developer boards in from Scott's Osh Park Design, and um, looking forward to populating those so I can do a little easier playing with the uh, Broadcom ports. Awesome. Uh, let me it. know if you have any questions about it. Okay. Thanks. Because I know I don't document my stuff well. <laughs> Uh, it looks pretty clear. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Next up is Katni. You you could document a little more, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I All right. So last week, I finished up the Neo Slider guide that went live. I posted all of the RP2040 pretty pins diagrams where they needed to be. They were completed. And actually, it is a complete mystery as to who did them <laughs> because none of us have the original files locally but all the files exist and have been like spread around um so we have no idea who made them but they're completed and they're also in the guides and also in the pcb repos and so on and so forth so um if you're looking for pretty pins on the rp2040 boards they are around um i wrote two arduino starter templates for rp2040 it's um getting the id set up and and loading your first sketch um, I'm working on, uh, I'll be adding those eventually to the RP2040 guides. I added a create and get feed function to the CircuitPython Adafruit IO library. Um, I thought that was a last week thing, but I think it was actually on the going to do list, um, because it didn't pop up in my, as done in my to do list until Tuesday. So obviously hadn't finished it. Um, but it's super keen. Uh, it will automatically create the feed if it doesn't exist and it'll get it either way. Um, and it eliminates like four lines of code that are in a bunch of examples. Um, so check that out if you are ever doing the try and accept to create and then get uh, the feed. 
um, and I finished the KB2040 guide as well. Today so far, did a various a bunch of various miscellaneous on my list, tested a PR, merged a few PRs, um, did some guide feedback, um, added to the ESP32 S2 UF2 bootloader installer template. Um, it turns out if you load an Arduino sketch onto an ESP32 S2, it comes with the bootloader for free. So if you already have the Arduino IDE set up for ESP32 S2, it might be a lot easier than using ESP tool or web serial. Um, so it walks through quickly how to set that up and how to um, flash the blank sketch, and then you should be able to get to your bootloader at that point. Um, so the rest of today, I'm going to try to add the KB2040 to the Phil Hauer Arduino core. Um, that is the RP2040 Arduino core that we use. And um, adding stuff to it is a little more complicated than adding stuff to, say, the SAMD core. So I'm working through trying to figure that out and hopefully get that done today. And then finish up any other open-ended miscellaneous on my list. I kind of think I did most of it this morning. So there's really not... Um, much else to do, which is good because the rest of this week is going to be packing. And on Thursday, I will be moving from Canada to um, the US. Uh, I actually live in the US, but have spent um, most of a couple years in Canada. Um, and we are now officially, hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong. Um, we're moving back to the US. So I'm really excited and I will be gone most of this week, really just the rest of the week. And um, back on Monday for a short period of time um, before the holidays. So hold down the fort, everybody. I know you can mm -hmm. do it. And that's what I've got. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Uh, good luck moving. It's exciting. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up and last up, let's hear from maker Melissa. Uh, hello. Uh, so last week I updated several web serial and web Bluetooth apps to be more responsive. Uh, I fixed a web serial ESP tool error that was occurring when reconnecting without refreshing the page. Uh, it was having trouble detecting if the stub code was running and needed a little assistance there. Uh, I added a bunch of boards to circuitpython.org for Blinka and CircuitPython. I fixed the Funhouse uh, setup directions for adding the ESP32 board to Arduino and or ESP32 S2 board. I continued working on Display IO for Blinka to update it to circuit, be CircuitPython 7 compatible. And this week I'm going to work more on the Display IO for Blinka. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And that's it for status updates. The final section we have here is in the weeds. This is a chance for us to have any more long form discussion. Uh, in the weeds are like technical discussions. Uh, so we've got one topic and I'll kick it over to Jerry to kick that off. Okay, and, and I, you know, I accept and realize that, you know, the Broadcom support is totally pre-alpha and, you know, but so we don't need to discuss this if you don't want to. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I ran into a, a, an issue. Uh, the, oh, let me get the cat out of here first. Ow, 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 ow. Um, Your cat has ideas about what the issue is. <laughs> that um, it's working fine. It comes up to the REPL just fine. Um, but 90% of the time, when I unplug the board, and I go plug it back in again. The SD card's corrupted. It comes up, it blinks four times, which I believe is saying I can't read that SD card. Hmm. Um, and I have to, if I reflash it, it works fine. And and as you know, the 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 circuit pi, the, the mass storage device is not working properly on the 4B still. It, it when I plug it into my Linux box, sometimes it does a little beep boop, and you know I look in the DMSG and it complains about not being able to, you know, um, recognize what's being plugged in. And sometimes it mounts a board, a drive called 31 gigabyte, I have a 32 gig card, so 31.9 gig device, hmm. which I can't access. It just shows up in the in the device log. Hmm. Other times it shows nothing. But I don't know if that's related to why it's corrupting the board. But I didn't know if, if again, if, if you have any suggestions, is there something you I can do? I suppose I could build it, turn off the, the mass storage. I don't know. if I, would... I thought I had fixed that. Right, like there was, you had reported that it wasn't working and then I found and fixed something, but I guess that was 
that was with circuit python not even booting um, right so it's fine yeah that, that's fixed fix. but the but it's never i've never had a circuit five drive come up reliably or at all because hmm. my it it is on the io board here it is coming up for me if i ask right. you one i would one th suggestion i would be curious about is just if, if it's if you're only trying one sd card try some different sd cards if you have some yeah, spares I, I have tried some different ones but uh i'll try i can try some more i try i've got a 32 gig one and a one gig one and i tried both of those and okay sort of get some results but um i'm using a 16 gig okay. lexar one is what i've got in here um i'm not surprised right like like you said it's pretty early um yeah the other when it doesn't come up at all right uh does do you have an hdmi display plugged in or like is it in not the... regularly. I, I'll, I'll work on that but uh yeah i'll have to see if it if it's actually it just nothing comes up in the REPL at all when but it's the, but the REPL it's... does come up what's that does the does the usb serial come up usb serial like no you... i have i have a yeah UART. Serial device a uart plugged in okay. and i see nothing at all when it fails, all the, okay. you know, just the red light comes on and the green light comes on and blinks four times, mm -hmm. which, which again, I think is, is an indicator from the bootloader that it's not seeing, it's not able to read mm -hmm. um, one of the you know ma major startup files. Right. Um, so there is, so, yeah, there is a, there is good output from the Raspberry Pi bootloader on the HDMI stuff. So I'll try that again. That'll yeah. give should give more errors about like reading the SD card. It, mm -hmm. It's weird to me that it's corrupting the image itself because there's only one write that it should be doing. It should be writing the partition table. CircuitPython will write the partition table if the partition table only has one entry. Um, so if you flashed a full disk image, that'll be the state it's in. Um, and it, I have been able to bring it up and look, do a lister with OS lister and see the files on it, you know, the boot out dot text, but although I, I try to read them, they're all have nothing in them. Um, that's another thing I did notice. The one time I did get it up and running, mm -hmm. I just tried to read, open and read those files and they were empty. The hello, the code dot pi and the, um, and the boot out dot text were both empty or at least huh. read, you know, reading them didn't work. So if you ever get to that state again, you might yeah. try the storage erase file system. Oh, that's a good point. Um, All right. Yeah, it, I, I, if I flash a new copy, I can get to a nice clean REPL every time, you know, as long as I reflash the, the card so well, I can get it up. What are you anyway. using to reflash the card? Pi Imager. Okay, so at least for me, for Pi Imager, it, it will only overwrite the first megabyte and the last megabyte of the card. Oh, so it that's good if the file system for CircuitPython is correct, but it means uh -huh. that if it's broken, you're not actually redoing that portion. Oh, of the so is it uh, better or you just use DD? Um, I just use PyImager, but you could do the erase file system and the erase file system should work. Oh, okay. I think. All right. All right, um, I'll do that again. But, but I'm, what I'm saying is that like the, the imager will not fix a CircuitPython file system for you probably okay um because like it will overwrite the partition table again but it just basically says like oh you know the partition table just says like there's a fat file system here and because the imager doesn't overwrite it which was my goal right like ideally that gets preserved when you right. do the disk imager um like yeah but if it's not okay, but but even the storage file array should should take care of that, right? So that that should start that should start the the circuit Python file system fresh again. If the boot okay. if the bootloader is having trouble starting up, then somehow we're corrupting the first megabyte or the first two hundred and fifty six megabytes is what that first boot drive is is in, okay. um, which could be a part problem with the part file partition, right? I know people on Raspberry Pi have problems with it, but I was expecting that CircuitPython would actually be more reliable. But then again, I don't know. Like, this is the first time we put that main file system on an SD card. So there could right. be... And this is the first time we're using the SD card 
mechanics that I s snagged out of the IDF as well. So okay. maybe right, there's I'll, some I'll bugs there. Thing, so let you know. Um, and uh, yeah, but like I said, and otherwise, you know, it's the when it comes up and runs a REPL, it, it does all sorts of nice things. But <laughs> yeah, I just, know. Turn it off and go turn it on again after reflash. The it's just kind of a, yeah, a slow process. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just, so the bootout.txt should be there. And should there be a hello dot, a hello world in the, in the code.py? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I think, but I, I think, boot out. yeah, I think that the contents of code.py is, is um, turned on by the full build flag. And I don't think I have that on right now because there was a bunch of stuff that was unimplemented. Okay. Check. I'm trying to remember. That. I'm, not, I'm sure there was a code. I can't. I can't actually recall now. But I'm trying to. I, know I tried to read the bootout.txt. Uh, it just kept telling me it was there, but telling me you know, I couldn't read anything out of it. Yeah. I, I would try erasing would try first. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, but I've been using it, you know, enough for like the spy UR I squared C testing that I've been doing. I've been. Like I, I have a, a bit of a weird setup because I'm not booting off the SD card, but mm -hmm. I've been able to get it to show up as a CircuitPy drive and be able to modify it like pretty reliably, at least. If if I put an SD card in there, boot off a USB drive, will will it, will that work? Uh maybe. I haven't tried it, but. Okay. Um, um, I don't know if it would still write files to the. Files to the SD card, but but boot it would. off of the it USB. would. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah basically, Good. the USB host stuff just wouldn't work because CircuitPython doesn't support it, but the bootloader does. So the bootloader, the bootloader would recognize the USB drive, copy the CircuitPython image into memory, which yeah. is what it does regardless of where it is. It it actually ends up in RAM regardless, right. and then um, CircuitPython only knows how to read off the SD card. Right. So okay. It would be able to do that, but it would. Yeah, so you, you can change the bootloader to to boot off the USB first, and then right. maybe that would. I don't know if that would help or not. All right. I'll, I'll yeah. poke around. So I, now that I have the boards, I can populate and I, I can easily switch back and forth between my two W and my four B, which will make it easier to compare what's going on too. Yeah. Now it's a pain to move. I, <laughs> I I know that the two W last I used it was having reliability problems where it would like hang when I was doing mass storage stuff. Right. But trying to get a good backtrace off that was really hard, and I, I couldn't figure out what the problem was. So. Okay. Well, that... I'm glad you're working too on the uh, on the other Pi boards. It'll be fun to to be able to move down the chain in the. Uh, yeah, the, I think the... it's mainly just the zero, right? Like the zero, the original yeah, zero right. is just such the it's the right form factor. I assume a lot of people have them sitting around and are not using them, like me. <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, they just gave away. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll get them back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I figured that was a good, like, I, I'm hopeful that if, I'm hopeful there might, it might give a different lens on some of these reliability issues too. You know, because the peripherals are so much the same, but the, it's just the cores that are different. Um, All right, thanks. Yeah. And uh, I don't mean to be pressuring anything here. I realize this is not, not the you know, no, prime focus. <laughs> I, I've kind of set myself an internal deadline, so you didn't need to worry about it. Like, okay. I'm going to be doing Pi stuff and guide stuff kind of throughout the end of the year, and then come January, I'll be switching gears is my plan. <laughs> I'm a little sad that the USB host stuff isn't being done, but it's a lot of work, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so we'll get there. We'll get there at some point. Yep. <laughs> it's come a long way very fast. So. <laughs> yeah, it's been really... It, it was a lot of fun to learn. It's just like... Finding these nasty bugs is taxing. I'm sure. Well, thanks. Cool. All right. And let me take a time code and we'll wrap this up. Um, thank you all for joining us for the CircuitPython Weekly for December 13th, 2021. Um, oh, that just reminds me we're at the end of the month. Uh, and I did want to remind folks that the circuit in January every year we do uh, kind of an annual, like bigger vision, post what you think CircuitPython should be more broadly. Uh, we call it CircuitPython 2022 this next year. Uh, we, we changed the year, so it's kind of hard to call it something consistent. Uh, but 
Uh, over the holidays, I'd encourage you to think about where you think, what pieces are missing from CircuitPython still and what uh, things that you think that should be kind of big goals for us as a community. Um, so think about that and then I'll, I will do a blog post that kicks this off and then what I do is I'll do blog posts throughout January uh, to aggregate the posts that po folks have made. And so you'll see more details come January, but uh, it'd be awesome to see that from everyone. Um, okay, so that was a detour. Uh, so thank you everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adaf Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will be also featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. And thank you, Anne, for putting that together. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, if you're listening to this some other way. You can join the server by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, if you'd like to be notified about, about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython the Nieces role on Discord. And with that, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.